All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, Thursday mentoring hour, uh, where we spend some time discussing, asking questions, sharing our thoughts and learnings. Uh, let's just uh, begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe, uh, Avdi, can you please lead us in prayer? Yes, good morning. Thank you, Pastor. Our Heavenly God, God, Father Almighty, we thank you for one more morning, Father. We thank you for your mercies are renewed every morning. We thank you, Father, for the word that we have, the presence of God, Father, the love, grace, and mercy that you pour out on us day after day, Father. We thank you for this time. and We have this uh, fellowship, Father. Lord, Father, lead us by your Holy Spirit, Father. Fill us with your wisdom and favor, Father, so that we learn your word, we go deeper into your word, we understand, Lord Father, the things that you have revealed to your children, Father, so that we are rooted in your word, we are established in your word, we are able to walk by your word, be doers of your word, Father. And as we are preparing ourselves for the day of your coming, Father, let each one be equipped, Father, everyone who listens to the recording, Father, everyone who is seeking the one and true living God may be blessed by 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 your presence and by this uh, video father and le let everyone be touched by your presence father father fill us with your presence this morning father so that we can spend the day in your presence father glorify you in whatever we may do and father in everything in every need we may look up to you for you are our lord our father who provides every good and perfect gifts to your children father we thank you once again for all the pastors all the pastoral team for all the students who are blessed by APC, for everyone who is here and who is, uh, Lord Father, part of our great, uh, beautiful uh, fellowship, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise, and we give you all authority and power, Father. We take complete control, Father, and lead us, Father, so that we are blessed in you, Father. Once again, we thank you. Once again, we glorify your holy name. We give you glory, honor, and praise for who you are and how you lead us, Father. We thank you once again and ask this prayer in the precious and most matchless name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Avni, for leading us in prayer. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll leave this time open. Uh, please feel free to post your questions, share your thoughts uh, from anything that you've been studying, uh, in your personal study time or even during the courses. Uh, leave this time open for questions. Our faculty is here to we'll try our best to answer the questions as well. Right, you can also uh, post your questions on the chat, or if you'd like to, you can even unmute and ask your questions. Uh, or you can also uh, feel free to share uh, your learnings over the, over the uh, entire semester up to now, this one month, or the courses that you are uh, taken, uh, your learnings, you can feel free to share that as well. I'll ask a question, Pastor. Sure, go ahead. Uh, we've been learning about uh, the end times and uh, the dispensations that the world interprets about pre mid and post-trib uh, rapture. So um, I just want to know, everyone who explains this explains with the full conviction that they what they believe is uh, correct. Now, uh, my question is, how does anything that we believe out of the three impact uh, the life of a believer or walk with the Lord? How does it actually impact uh, whether, you know, either of one has to be true. Not all three are going to be true. So what I believe, I believe is true, but uh, all three believe. So how does it impact the life of a believer overall? That's what my question is like. That understanding of... Thank you so much, Avni. Uh, like, uh, maybe Pastor Nancy, uh, would you like to share your thoughts on this, please? Uh, yeah, 
yeah uh, thank, thank you, you pastor paul and thank you avni for this question so yeah uh, avni as you pointed out this is uh, a matter of great contention um, you know among many believers some believe in uh, pre trip post trip uh, you know uh, 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 different different schools of thought uh, but i think the reason why people subscribe to a certain um, uh uh school of thought is because of uh you know their reasons their reasons uh, for example like i uh, would subscribe to uh, a pre tribulation uh, uh, you know rapture to take place and for that uh, you know i i go by some of the scriptures that say that you know the those who believe in the lord they will be caught up in the clouds so based on you know 1 thessalonians 4:17 and then uh, similar th that same event is talked about again in 1 corinthians 15 so based on that uh, i believe in a pre tribulation rapture um, so uh, i i think avni uh, basically you know the interpretation of the scriptures is uh, what people base their belief on um, so um, like uh, each person uh, as we study the scriptures and then you know we are convinced that yeah this is what uh, these verses are referring to i think uh, uh, you know people end up Uh, even those who are um, believe the same things about all other matters somehow uh, when it comes to um, the end times they may have slightly differing views but as you said you know what is the impact what is the implication uh, i feel like uh, all believers are anyway called to be prepared uh, for the second coming of christ and uh, uh, so uh, that that sense of readiness and preparedness that doesn't change you know uh, no matter no matter how things are going to unfold so in terms of the impact uh, i think uh, as believers we don't really have to worry too much about it because uh, we know that at all times we have to be prepared uh, and um, you know god's grace is there uh, upon us so that's that's my view i would let uh, other faculty add to what i've shared Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Oh, uh, uh, Jean, Pastor Roshan, would you like to add your thoughts? Uh, I think Nancy has uh, has has done uh, yeah has done real justice to that. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, Pastor Nancy. Uh, Avni, I hope that answers your question. Yes, very much. Thank you so much. All right, great. All right. Uh, we got a list of questions from Herbert on the chat. Uh, let's take one question at a time. Uh, first one: A sin is anything you do that is contrary to God's word. Uh, is that right? Uh, yes, that is right. Uh, first one: Do we have a small sin or a big sin, or whether small or big, it's all the same? So the question Herbert has here is: There's a small sin and a big sin or whether both are the same in god's eyes so uh, pastor roshan do you think you can share your thoughts on this please hey yes paul yeah um as in with regards to that first question do we have a small sin a big sin or big or small it's all the same uh yeah i, I don't think there's um, any distinction you know distinguish between um the sins as such but i mean i just my mind goes back to uh, uh adam and eve in the garden and uh, what they did was i mean just to, uh their disobedience to uh for the fall to come in um so uh how would i do think uh you know this the sin is sin and i think uh with what uh, i was ex was just uh, explaining in another class that sin is simply just falling short of the mark right uh, romans 3:23 says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god that means uh, fallen short that is a sin is just falling short uh, of the origin from the original design that god intended for us um so yeah i mean this all is english but what you can uh, do is probably is um to a study on the matthew 1231 where it says you know every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven uh but blasphemy against the holy spirit will not be forgiven so that's um you know 
I mean, that, that purse requires, I don't know how long to just, you know, uh, look, we looked into and study. So uh, at the time we can look into that purse. But that's it for me for that question. Thank After you. Thank I hope you. that's okay. Thank you, Pastor Roshan. Uh, uh, yeah, how about Pastor I? Paul? Yes, Pastor go ahead. Paul, I, I, I thought I'd just add to what uh, uh, Pastor Roshan said. I just want to bring that one verse. It is uh, in James two ten. So it says, um, it says, for whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. So um, I think that that pretty much sums that up that uh, that sin is sin and it's not a degree of sin before god it's uh, everything that goes against uh, the will of god so to, maybe not to classify it that way but sin is sin whether it's small or big and i think that scripture really talks of, of even even one sin being uh, having uh, you know even if you've sinned once or a small sin you still you are guilty of breaking the entire law yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jean. Yeah. Uh, yes, go ahead, Nancy. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Roshan, um, Pastor Jean, and uh, uh, Pastor Paul. I uh, just wanted to add uh, a perspective to, to this. So, yes, um, you know, we are called to keep the law and not uh, depart from it in any way. So, there's an expectation uh, for perfection. However, we know that, you know, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit and, you know, we have God's grace and because of the cross of the Lord Jesus, um, right, our sins have already been atoned for. So we, we're living in that period of grace. Uh, however, you know, one scripture, uh, 1 Peter 1.16, you know, where we are told, be holy because I am holy. So this whole thing about, um, you know, every sin, uh, uh, taking us away from God, every sin having a consequence, every sin needing, um, you know, a, a punishment uh, is simply because of who God is and his holiness. You know, when we look at it um, uh, in that sense, uh, God is so holy that the, the smallest, slightest deviation um, is falling below the standard. And, and that's where you know, we we are that that's where we infer that uh, even if it is the smallest sin, if it is sin, you know, you're not matching up to what God is saying. Be holy as I am holy. Uh, but yeah, praise God that uh, we have the cross, we have the Holy Spirit uh, to uh, still continue to strive uh, to to be holy with God. So just wanted to add this, Pastor Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Nancy. I was just reminded of this example that I read quite a few years back, um, just uh, a practical, you know, practical answer. Uh, you know, we if we take a clean glass of water, we take a drop of maybe poison or, you know, uh, uh, contaminated water and you put it into this glass of clean water, uh, we're not going to drink it because the entire clean glass of water has been contaminated. And so, uh, so is also sin. Uh, whether big or small, uh, when we live in it, uh, uh, it it is it contaminates our body and contaminates our spirit and our soul as well. Uh, yes, Manu, I see your hand raised, and you said that your uh, we can the voice is coming through for us. Maybe you can please check your your phones. Uh, double check that, please. All right, uh, we have two other questions from Herbert. The Bible doesn't say that alcohol is a sin, but drunkenness is so if my denomination prohibits its followers to take alcohol so if i take it would it be a sin in front of god good question uh, pastor jakes uh, would you like to uh, share your thoughts on this question please yeah, hi hi paul thanks hi. paul thanks for the question um yeah um, you're right uh, herbert in the sense um, uh, scripture does say that drunkenness is sin, and uh, and so by which we kind of come to the conclusion that uh, okay, it's, um, in moderation it's okay, but there are in a lot of other scriptures that we see, um, you know, that that talks about um, 
the the ill effects of alcohol you know or wine you know you see in proverbs you see in um, uh, sorry i'm not able to pull up the references um, but you see in a, a, a lot of other places the ill effects of that and the and the uh, and the lack of judgment and perception that um, that comes because of uh, you know uh, the use of wine but we also know that paul says okay use a little wine for your stomach sake and uh, you know he tells um, timothy because of um, uh, for for, me for medicinal use so uh, we see that okay um, but the thing is this you know um, that alcohol uh, in moderation or otherwise has the potential to open the door for addiction okay that is one thing that we need to keep in mind it is addictive uh, has the potential to open the door for uh, for addiction long term uh, you know every like uh, every uh, uh, person who's um, uh, who's been addicted uh, it, it started small they never wanted to become you know an alcoholic they started small so it has that potential um so we should uh, we should be wary of that we should understand that now um uh, that is uh, that is the first thing the second thing is <clears throat> what we see uh, in um you know what we see in um i think it's in yeah um let me just uh, take this out what we see in First Corinthians, actually, where Paul talks about um, being uh, careful. Of course, it is in the context of uh, uh, you know uh, food offered to idols, but he is talking about <clears throat> you know if you look at one Corinthians eight, and uh, if you go down to verse eight, um, verse eight and verse nine it talks about how food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, or if we do not, or if we do not eat are we the worse. But beware, lest somehow this liberty of yours makes becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. You know that's another thing to look at. One, alcohol has a potential to be enslaving, has a potential to you know open the door to addiction. Uh, all of us know that. The second one is that. You know, let's say you're saying, okay, I'm fine. I'm just, you know, I'm just with this kind of, um, I have, I know my limits, whatever. But then the second thing is this, that are you becoming a stumbling block to a weaker brother? Right? We know that this scripture is in the context of put off with idols, but it would apply. You know, anything that you do that you're becoming a stumbling block to a weaker brother. And... Um, so yeah, so these 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 things, uh, uh, and, and the third thing is also cultural. You know, in certain cultures, um, you know, drinking is uh, it's not a taboo. It's the done thing. It's like any other beverage, and we know that there are, you know, there, there may be pastors who drink. There may be you know, churches who who do not, uh, you know, kind of warn people ab uh, about that. It it could be cultural, uh, you know, as also. So. Um, uh, but but we need to consider these. I think these two things would uh, would be something that we need to consider. Um, there is a uh, we can have, I can just probably put out that link a little later, um, uh, where we have uh, actually talked about in church, uh, where Pastor shared about uh, uh, about uh, you know, alcohol and why as a church and why as a church staff we do not you know um, uh, drink alcohol. Um, I think that would be helpful for you. Uh, I'll just put out that link. Thank you. I'll, anyone else who wants to share more? Thank you, Pastor Jakes. Uh, very clear. Uh, anybody else? Uh, Pastor Jean, Pastor Nancy, Pastor Roshan, if you'd like to add. Uh, don't bother. I think Pastor Jakes is covered. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Herbert, do you have any follow-up question to that, to your second question? Oh. Um, not, not really. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Okay. All right. You have a third question here too. Does God love all his people the same way? If yes, why did he choose Israelites as his own people? Right. Uh, Pastor Nancy, would you like to go for this, please? Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can, I mean, I have an answer right away for this. 
Okay, maybe I'll I'll let uh, someone else take it, uh, Pastor Paul, if you sure, don't mind. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, Pastor Jakes. The third question. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but, uh, my I joined a little late. So okay, my, I, I'll just <clears> post. Can you just so, yeah? Can you just yeah. post it again? And, question is does god love all his people in the same way if yes why did he choose israelites uh, as his own people yeah i think this is something that we looked at last week um where um uh, we saw that yes uh, I, I don't know if it was last week or the week before that but the fact is that um, yeah god does uh, love everyone the same way he's he's uh, you know we, we know that he's not partial but in his plan and purpose he chose that the messiah would come <clears throat> through this group of people you know that was his plan that the law would come through this so it was um like uh i don't know sample size if you want to call it that but that was his plan you know like like many other things like he said okay uh, around this time you know or at this time the messiah would come in um, you know, why not at the beginning, you know, why not later? But in his plan, in his sovereign plan, um, this is what he um, we, he decided. Now, I know people have a lot of theories, why the Jews and, and so on, but um, but I think um, that's that's one thing that we can be sure of. And, and from there, the, you know, the whole plan of redemption unfolds and which covers the entire world, you know, which, which is uh, uh, salvation, you know, by grace through faith, it, it covers the entire world. So it, it's not like he has left others behind. But um, the fact that they are chosen is that uh, the plan of redemption unfolded. Um, yeah, so that is something that uh, I can share. Uh, Nancy. Uh, yes, thank you, Pastor. I, I think Pastor has addressed uh, the question really well. So uh, uh, Israel was chosen because of the plan of God. But uh, of course, we know that uh, uh, since then and from there, God has brought salvation to the ends of the earth. And uh, I was just reminded of the book of Acts, how um, the apostles they uh, take the gospel everywhere and they preach uh, uh, you know they're on their mission to uh, take this 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 word this good news to every creature uh, you know every person uh, 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 in the world uh, and that's because you know god's love is for everyone and uh, uh, you know god really wanted salvation to touch uh, each life no matter what tribe uh, you know, what nation, what community we belong to. So, yeah, thank you, Pastor. I think you've addressed it really well. And thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Uh, uh, anyone else would like to share your thoughts on this? Uh, why did God choose the Israelites? Uh, uh, was it favoritism? Was it uh, just God's sovereign choice? Uh, anyone would like to share your thoughts on this? I'm reminded of uh, Romans. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Jean. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I just wanted to add uh, one. Um, I, I wasn't looking at Israel as a nation, <laughs> but the fact that, uh, you know, Ab when Abraham was called, he responded. So we see that in uh, Hebrews 11, 8, where it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. So if we look at <clears throat> Abraham's um, history, he was actually, uh, uh, you know, came from Ur. Uh, and that that was a place which was a heathen uh, heathen place. Uh, you know, they were probably an unbelieving uh, community. Um, and but when God presents Himself to Abraham, uh, He responded, and He left, or uh, you know, went, uh, and then He left Haran, and then settled in in Canaan. And uh, so so Abraham just responded in faith, and and that's what God was looking for. I mean, definitely God had a plan uh, way before Abraham actually responded. But I, I think that is very significant in uh, in God's calling when someone responds in faith. And, you know, you see the entire uh, nation of Israel being blessed because of the covenant that God had with Abraham. So, yeah, I just wanted to add that as a as another perspective. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Jean, for sharing. Uh, Herbert, I hope your questions have been answered. Uh, do you have any thoughts, any other question that you'd like to a follow up question on these three? Uh, for sure, you have given me uh, very good answers um, and references. Yeah, now uh, I have known why. I have known why. Thank you so much, House. And uh, Pastor Nancy, you're welcome back. Right. Thank you so much, Herbert, for those questions. Uh, yes, we'll continue to leave this time open. Uh, if you have questions, uh, thoughts, your things that you've learned over the period, over the course of this semester, please feel free to unmute and share. Or you can also post your questions on the chat. Uh, maybe, Pastor uh, Paul, uh, that is that last request uh, which I have yes. forwarded. Yeah, I think you'll put it in consideration. Oh, uh, I think the courses we do in e-learning, the material will remain there, the PDFs and the video recordings for future use. Uh, is that your question, Herbert? Uh, is it what you're referring to? Yeah, 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 it was. Mm. Okay, uh, I think Monica has uh, so answered your question on the chat. Uh, so you can download the PDF notes from the e-learning platform and the videos are available on the APC Bible College uh, YouTube channel as well. So uh, uh, yes, the notes can be downloaded on the e-learning platform and you can also watch the videos on the uh, YouTube, uh, APC Bible College YouTube channel. Is that okay, Herbert? Uh, yeah, 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 fine, fine. Thank you so much. All right, all right. Thank mm. you, Herbert. Uh, yes. Thank you, Pastor Jakes, for uh, putting up those answers to common questions. Yes. Uh, so, Herbert, feel free to, uh, you know, uh, go go to this link. Uh, feel free to download it and you can uh, you know a lot of common questions that people have youth uh, uh, you know you, you can find those answers there as well um, I think some of the questions were also on um, you know tattoos would it is it all right as believers to uh, put tattoos and all so you'll find a lot of those common questions there answered all right uh, we we'll do have some more time uh, let's leave this time open now, feel free to share your thoughts, questions. Right. Okay, uh, all right, three of them have raised their hands. Let's take one by one. Uh, Manu, feel free to uh, unmute and ask your questions. Uh, Divya and uh, uh, Nikki, we'll come to you too next. Feel free, Manu. Yes. Okay. Uh, Manu, did you raise your hand? Do you have a question? Okay. All right. Let's go to Divya. We'll come back uh, to Manu if she has a question. Yes, Divya, uh, you have a question. Please go ahead. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, my question is regarding uh, the, as we read Old Testament, especially um, like books like Kings, Chronicles, and all these. Uh, uh, so in these books, uh, how do we like practically apply? Like most of it seems to be like history. Uh, so uh, as we read those scriptures, um, how do we practically apply those in our lives? That's my question. Or is it wrong to even uh, do that? I'm not sure to interpret in it in those ways. Yeah, but my question was like regarding the Old Testament, uh, especially the historical books. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Divya, uh, for that question. Uh, yes, I will leave this open. Uh, Pastor Jakes, Pastor Nancy, Jean, Pastor Roshan, any one of us would please like to uh, answer this question, please. Oh. 
Yeah, I'll just uh, share my thoughts briefly. Um, uh, hi, Divya. Uh, for a long time, I, I, I like the Old Testament books because it's like a story. It's, uh, I, I, it was a while ago, I found it more interesting than the New Testament, but I'm not saying what <laughs> we need both. But uh, regarding the two specific books that you mentioned, um, I think those two specific books has a uh, story of one of my favorite characters, if not of all of us, is the story of the uh, life of David. And again, I keep, um, you know, when I was talking to the youth recently, I told them that, you know, when, when I <clears throat> when I don't know what to read in the Bible, I either go to the Gospels or the life of David and just see. And um, so just one example of how we can maybe apply is, uh, as I was going through the, the life of David in the book of uh, of Samuel, which is, you'll find the same story in Kings, um, is after everything that David goes through, uh, you know, it says that David found his strength in the Lord. Uh, you know, after being rejected by his by the king, his mentor, uh, by the very people that he saved, who wanted to turn him up to, give him up to Saul, and then his own uh, enemies, uh, the Philistines that he was living with, they didn't want. They rejected him, and then his family has been taken captive by the Amalekites. Uh, and then the same, the very group of people, 400 or people that he invested in, uh, later in Second Samuel, we come to know that they were the mighty men of David. They were the mighty warriors that to have ever lived uh, in the face of the earth, in the history of Israel back then. And in all of this, the disappointments and discouragements, uh, we see this significant line that says, in I think First Samuel chapter 30, verse 3 and 4, you may find that, um, it says, David found his strength in the Lord. And just reading that, that's just one of the examples that, that, okay, you know, it encouraged me that it is important for me to find strength in the Lord. I think in this day and age that we tend to find strength in so many different things, which is fine. I mean, we reach out to our pastors, our mentors, our best friends. We uh, kind of pour up to them and kind of seek for help and um, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope you get what I say. But just that line being, David found his strength in the Lord made so much of a difference to me. And so maybe, uh, you know, small things like that, uh, because God's word is uh, prophetic in nature, it's also living. It's it's prophetic because it's living. Um, and in Hebrews 4.10, it says, uh, you know, his word is a double-edged sword uh, from the old to the new, from Genesis to the Revelation. Um, and if you just we just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal uh, what he wants to speak to us through that specific passage of scripture, uh, you know, he will do, he will work in our hearts. And I hope that answers. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Roshan. Uh, yes, anyone else would like to share your thoughts? Uh, Pastor Nancy, Jean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Roshan, for that, and Divya for the question. Uh, so as, uh, you know, Pastor Roshan has summed it up beautifully, I was reminded of two uh, verses. I thought I'd just share those verses. So uh, 2 Timothy um, 3, 16, uh, 17, you know, those, those scriptures uh, tell us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know, and uh, it's, it's given for... Uh, um, reproof, correction, instruction uh, in righteousness and things like that. So as uh, Pastor Roshan shared, no matter where uh, we are, which part of the Bible we are studying, there's something to take from it. And uh, we are being instructed in the uh, in the path of righteousness. And one more uh, scripture is uh, Romans uh, 15 and verse 4. I have it open in front of me, so I'll read it out. Um, I think the one version open. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll read it from NKJV version. It says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know, once again, that points to the fact that we can learn from everything that has been given in the word of God. So just wanted to add those two scriptures to our discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. I'll also just add, um, because I'm looking at, at these books uh, very, you know, at a larger perspective. So when you look at these books, it actually gives you the history of, of, the, of the kings. 
And uh, something that's very interesting to note, and you know, something that I did earlier on when I was a youth was actually <coughs> look at you know the lifestyle of each king and how it uh, you know it went down the generations, and and you would see you know one set being rebellious, you see another set being obedient, and how God um, uh, uh, you know takes on the obedience of 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 those kings, uh, you know, who were uh, true to his call and how he blesses them and and the generations to come. So, you know, when you look at that book holistically, it gives you such a lesson of being um, uh, right with God, of of being in obedience to what He wants, and and how much that's going to impact generations to come. So, I think that really helps. You know, when you look at the books in a at a bigger picture too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jean, uh, for sharing. Uh, Divya, I trust this answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Pastor Roshan, Pastor Nancy. Okay. Thank you for the references as well. Thank sure, you, Pastor sure. Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Uh, all right. Uh, I think uh, we'll go to the next one. Nikki uh, Nicholson, uh, you know, you raised your hand. Would you like to ask your question? Yeah. Please? Yes, go ahead. So this was more of a practical thing when someone asked me, I wasn't entirely sure if I was right or wrong. So uh, I, I'd like to address it to Pastor Jake since he's doing finances. Um, so someone asked me that they were, I'm just giving you an example, I don't know the exact numbers, but they had an insurance policy or something like that. So you put in for X amount of time, you put in about a lakh and you get two lakhs back. Now the question uh, he said was that I've already tithed for one lakh. Should I again go and tithe for the other one lakh which I'm getting from the insurance policy? And uh, I wasn't entirely sure what to tell them in my head, but I concluded saying if I if I look at the verses like you give off your first fruit, I would look at it the same way, where physically you're growing fruit, and I mean back in time you had your crops and you gave one tenth of that or. Um, so I addressed it in that way, but I'm not entirely sure. Is it right to give from the amount he gets extra or is it not right? So if you could give me some guidance in that, it'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Nikki. Yeah, I think um, that was uh, that was one of the questions, you know, like, like people were asking um, also, you know, uh, when I tithe, do I tithe on the grass or the net? <laughs> or, uh, you know, uh, what if it's just, uh, you know, some gift a present which comes in you know do i have to tithe on that also but uh, we we know that um you know this uh, whole issue uh, this whole uh, principle of tithing the lord has laid it um, down and we see right from the old testament into the new continuing into the new so um uh, in um i think it's in uh, second corinthians that uh, we see um no, we, we, one one is uh, I, I'm just digressing a little. Uh, the Second Corinthians um, uh, uh, chapter nine verse seven. Okay, so it, it's uh, looking at uh, giving itself, you know, giving uh, unto the Lord. Um, so it says, "Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. For God is able to make all grace abound toward you." that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. You know, just this, um, this, this the whole spirit or the motive and attitude, you know, behind giving. Second Corinthians 9 verses 7 and 8. Right? So, um, so I just wanted to, you know, share that up front. And um, hopefully that will guide this whole, you know, technicality of tithing and, and, and giving as well that okay whatever comes into my life the blessing that i receive uh you know i i want to give a tenth of that uh for god's purposes for you know the the purposes of god so with that guiding principle because there are no specific right of course first fruits of all increase is 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 that uh, you know that term that phrase that we see there but with that guiding principle if we look at uh what comes into our life and what we want to give um this should hopefully you know guide us to do to to do it so 
um so yeah uh, nikki you know i, I think uh, what you've uh, shared with uh, this person is is right so um but you can you can share this also to say okay let this be the motive you know don't be in any way compelled or say you know uh, and i'm under pressure to do this you know sometimes we can look at tithing that way but it's it's actually you know god who is who is given us and uh, it's it is again uh, we are giving uh, Uh, out of our heart cheerfully it's an act of worship and you know, if you look at it that way it will just liberate us to look at tithing in a whole new way yeah thanks nikki so sure. thank you pastor jay yeah. right thank you uh, nikki for that question uh, all right we have an, another question from john paul uh, i've heard some pe- someone prayed like this i apply the balm of gilead as they pray for healing is it okay to pray like that the balm of gilead yeah uh, referred to in uh, i think jeremiah chapter 8 um yeah, jeremiah is talking about the people of israel crushed oppressed he said is there no balm of gilead uh, to you know to recover them to restore them um so uh, uh, anyone would like to pastor nancy pastor jean pastor roshan as a jigs uh, feel free to uh, share your thoughts on this uh, is it okay to pray uh, i apply the balm of gilead uh, for healing uh, okay uh, thank you pastor paul i just want to add uh, my thoughts so what we see happen is in the old testament we have um we have certain we call them shadows or uh, we call them um as you study about them right you you are pointed towards christ and his redemptive work and then when you come to the new testament you know over there you uh, you see the lord jesus um sort of fulfilling that word so uh in this context when you talk about the balm of gilead of course we're talking about the one who will um come redeem the one who will come restore so in that sense yes it is referring to the work that the lord jesus does which includes healing okay and we we know that in the old testament god very clearly he uh, introduced himself with this covenant name as jehovah rafa so if someone uh, prays like this you know i apply the balm of gilead uh, for healing i mean i don't think it would be wrong because they're referring to the same thing though the terminology used is different we know that the balm of gilead is definitely pointing to the fulfillment in in the new testament which would be jesus so those are my thoughts but i would leave it open for uh, the other faculty to share please thank you Jean would you like to share your thoughts uh mm, no no all right. it's all right. thank you uh, pastor jays as uh, nancy was sharing I, i was just thinking you know if um, if someone really i mean i don't know without this understanding of you know the um, the types uh, and shadow if someone were to think that um, the bomb of gilead was a physical thing you know something spiritual uh, some spiritual material or something like that uh, then i guess it's good to correct uh, or have a deeper conversation with that person um, you know um, but and, and uh, maybe we can just ask you know why do you say that when you're praying um, uh, yeah just my thoughts uh, maybe to kind of align you know bring alignment bring uh, a focus to why they are praying that way um but otherwise yeah since it's referring to the redeeming work of christ um uh, on the cross um yeah if that is the understanding then we can just go ahead and pray yeah thanks for okay thank you fast so uh so basically it's uh, so uh, is it so is it all right to pray uh Uh, I apply the balm of Gilead, so it's all right to do that. Uh, just wanted to clarify. Uh. Uh, yeah, first of all, I just want to uh, add. I mean, answer the question that you've just asked. I think having the revelation that we have right now, which is about the name of Jesus, the authority, uh, you know, through the cross, uh, this this kind of statement. 
is um, it's not necessary because we have better you know yeah. so uh, i'm just saying that if someone as pastor jake said with the understanding of uh, uh, the balm of gilead being the redemptive work of christ if at all they make a statement like this with the understanding it's okay but definitely when you have the better to pray you know uh, in the name of jesus i don't think uh, we may need to use this statement Yes, thank you. thank you, thank you so much, Pastor Nancy. John, I hope that uh, clarifies your question. So even if uh, people pray that way, uh, uh, the point is you lead them to Christ. Uh, that the, actually the balm of Gilead is pointing to Christ in the New Testament. So, uh, John, I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, very much. Thank you. Right. Thanks, John. Uh, Okay, uh, Rob Sitkeno, Robert has thought here. I was thinking and wondering that in the Old Testament, giants used to live in the times of Noah. We all know then from where the giant came, giant Goliath came in David's time, as they all died in the flood, then how this generation of giants came in David's time. Okay, uh, all right, let me just uh, rephrase that question. So Sid's question is, uh, there were giants in the times of Noah, but after the flood, uh, the, uh, the entire uh, mankind was destroyed and God promised never to do that again. Uh, so Sid's question is, during the time of David, uh, uh, where did Goliath come from? Uh, Goliath, the giant Goliath come from? Uh, uh, how did this new generation of di giants come during David's time? Right, We have three minutes more. Uh, yes, any one of us can please uh, share your thoughts on this. Uh, Roshan, uh, Pastor Roshan. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, no, I yeah, don't really have an answer for that. But, okay. No problem. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Roshan. No problem. Uh, yes, anyone else? Uh, Pastor Nancy, Pastor Jakes? Uh, okay, Pastor Paul. Oh, well, uh, uh, what I am able to recall is, see, the Old Testament uh, giants who were destroyed in Noah's flood, they were a different um, you know, because it it says like the angels, they uh, intermarried with the human beings and they produced this generation. Uh, but this is in stark contrast to the kind of giants that existed during David's time. So Goliath was one among the Philistines and he was a complete human being. So Sitkino, I think we are talking about you know, two different creatures. Uh, so the Noah, uh, the, the giants from the time of Noah, I mean, people give them some names and there's all kinds of philosophies, you know, Nephilim and some names like that. But it's not the same as the uh, giants of David's time. So that's that's the clarification I want to bring. Is it Kenu? I hope it helps. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sid, for that question. Uh, we have two minutes left, uh, but we will uh, wrap up because we don't have time to answer those questions. So uh, thank you, everyone, for being part of our uh, uh, mentoring hour. Uh, it was a good time, good questions. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be able to learn from all these questions as well and apply it in our lives. Uh, let's wrap up this time uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, could one of us uh, please lead us or uh, close in prayer? Maybe Divya, uh, can you please close in prayer for us? Sure, sure, Pastor Paul. Thank you, thank you, Divya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this uh, wonderful time, Father, that you gave us uh, to, um, Father, whatever, Lord, as... Uh, uh, we do not have answers, Father, Lord, whatever we want to know. Lord, you've given us this opportunity, Father, to be mentored, to be, uh, Father, answered to, Father. We thank you, Father, for all the pastors, the pastoral team here, Father, Lord, bless them immensely, Father. 
continue to use them mightily for your glory we thank and praise you for everyone who are uh, here lord and all those who uh, are part of the apc bible college father we pray your blessing over them we bless them in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ father we pray lord the, the sessions uh, that are ahead uh, for today lord may your continued uh, lord um, presence and revelation lord your wisdom your grace lord be upon uh, the pastors and the students father we thank you and praise you in jesus precious name we pray amen 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 thank you divya thank you everyone for joining uh this time uh have a great day ahead see you in the classes bye now <laughs>